Hey guys, it's Aaron Bryce in Lars, and we have an update for you. Check it out. To start off this update, we've added a plus button next to the tabs. This icon creates new Fusion 360 designs faster. But next, let's start a sketch on this front face. Not only did we squash numerous bugs, but we also added many improvements to the sketch solver to increase the reliability while sketching. In addition, we added a new text flip option to switch the orientation of the text. Not only that, but sketch text will also remember any constraints and dimensions you had previously set on it. So if you edit your text, the constraints and dimensions will remain there and not get overwritten. Next, we have added two new options in the sweep command. Now we can define the taper and twist of the profile as it moves along the path. In this case, we will define the twist of the metal bar to be 720 degrees so that the profile will twist twice as it moves along the length of the path. Now let's throw it to Aaron to cover some of the new enhancements in the simulation workspace. We have some great news on the simulation front. And to demonstrate these new features, we'll use this pressure vessel I found on the Fusion Gallery. This was modeled very well, but for a first pass simulation, I may want to ignore features like threads, embossed texts, fillets, and other minor details. In the past, these changes would need to be made to the main model, but now we'll find new options to help with this sort of thing. So if you see this warning on models you've previously run simulations on, don't be alarmed. It's here to help, and I'm here to show you how. To make the simplifications to the model, I can select Simplify from the toolbar, or by selecting the option here. That'll take us to a new, but familiar workspace. Most of the commands you see here are modeling related, but there are a couple new ones, like Remove Features. Using this, you can select the component of interest, then move the slider to highlight regions of the model you might want to remove. Additionally, you can select specific features to filter for below. When you have the areas colored that you want to remove, hit the delete button and close the dialog. Once done, you can see it removed the fillets, holes, and threads from the port on the top. Because we've made this change, you'll no longer find an ability to suppress as we've previously used. Instead, you can select the component not the face or body, and remove it from the right mouse button menu. Additionally, like with the cleanout cover, we can remove all in one fail swoop by using the replace with primitives option. You'll want to adjust the shape, orientation, and size to get it just right. It looks like the threads weren't removed from the bottom port when we used the remove feature at the beginning. So in this case, I'll use remove face instead. This will intelligently get all three faces from each thread with just one selection. When you're done, you can finish up with the Simplify workspace and move on to the setup. Not too much has changed here, but there are some new selection methods you'll want to be aware of. All the internal or wetted faces of this vessel will need to have a pressure load applied, so I might try to use the new Select Adjacent Faces option to do this. Unfortunately, when I do this, it just doesn't do the trick because there are a lot of other faces unaccounted for. So making sure to turn the default selection back to Window, let's explore another option. In Selection Tools, you'll find some new options you'll want to explore, but the one I'm looking for is Seed and Boundary. By using this option and selecting the flange from each port as a boundary, and a single internal face as the seed, I can get all 17 wetted faces at once. I can save the selection set and apply the pressure load from there. The rest of the setup will be the same as usual, so let's skip ahead to the solve. We'll of course cloud solve this, because at the same time, I might want to create another version of this study with the as-built geometry. To clone the setup and simplification, we'll jump back into the Simplify workspace, and now you'll find the ability to create a new simplification model, clone the existing, or delete. We'll clone it, then using the timeline specific to the previous simplification efforts, suppress or unsuppress features to my liking. Remembering that in doing this, the internal faces I applied a pressure load to the last time was lost. So we'll make a quick edit, and before I go to solve, I'll recheck the degree of freedom plot. It's obvious in hindsight, but those three parts we brought back haven't had contacts applied. So an automatic contact will resolve that for us. And we'll start running this as well. With near perfect timing, the first study results come back, and we can use those results to help shape our next design decisions. Come see how the simplification workspace will allow you to get those simulations run faster. Next up, I'll send it to Lars. Hi, Lars here. 
In this video, I want to share with you some of the Fusion 360 turning improvements that the CAM development team have been cranking out the last few months. So first one, split stock to leave in radial and actual. This is just one of those that makes sense. On a lathe, the tolerance are often different in the radial and the actual direction. And in the software, it's pretty simple. For example, if you look at this profile, if I go to the passes tab, and check stock to leave, you will see that you now get control for both directions. How about non-symmetrical tool clearances? By default, the tool clearance is the same for front and back side, but users should have the freedom to change it if they want. Now, this function is on the tool tab. Notice the clear tool tip that Mike Matara added when you hover over the menu. I use these all the time, by the way, so uh, thank you, Mike. So this along with the possibilities of defining different lead in and lead outs on the linking tab results in a much better control of the tool entering and leaving the material. Next one is adding a dwell at the bottom of a tool path before retracting. This is one of my favorites, mostly because it comes directly from one of you. Users was adding a dwell manually in the code before retracting when using a single groove operation. This will improve the surface finish. Now, we are all about the good surface finish, so now in the single groove operation, on the passes tab, you will find a dwell before retract. And as you can see, now you just need to add how long. Talking about grooving, here's another useful checkbox. Allow rapid retract. This also works for parting operations. With this one checked, the retract in your code will be a rapid, so G0. If not checked, then it's your lead out feed rate that controls the tempo. The next one is coming from the Autodesk Idea Station. Thank you, Lonnie. Change the confinement on the geometry tab to act more like the height planes for milling. So, in the past, you will select an edge or a face, but you had limited control. Now you have full control. Selecting the stock, the model, and of course, you still have the option to select specific geometry and adding offsets. Controlling the confinement, your toolpath operates within. Here's the last one. New work coordinate position on the front of the chalk. Machinists and CNC programmers are often placing the Z offset on the front of the chalk. This gives a fixed point for consistent programming without you have to reset the offset every time you're placing a new part. Anyone who has ever programmed a dual spindle lathe should find this option really helpful. So make sure you go and check out all those cool new CAM functions. And cut down on simulation solve times by simplifying your models. And we have some brand new learning content for you guys. Go to the Fusion 360 website, hit support and learning, then start here. And there's a ton of videos to get you up and running with Fusion 360. But that's it for this update. Have a great day, guys. Take Cheers. care.